Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Mary Beth Carroll, and I work in the Office for Student Engagement and Practice at the University of Michigan School of Public Health. Our team um, supports prospective students all the way through current students and beyond uh, through graduation. Um, we have several teams in our office, um, including um, admissions and recruitment, um, student affairs, um, undergraduate education, as well as online. We also have a careers team and, of course, public health practice, which we're going to focus a little bit on today. My pronouns are she and her, and I'm really happy to be speaking with you all today. Hopefully this isn't your first interaction with our recruitment and admissions team, um, but if it is, we will be sharing some of that contact information if you have questions about applying. So while we're here today is um, we are kicking off our first enrichment session titled From the Classroom to the Field and the World of Public Health Practice. I'm joined by my colleague and I'm here to introduce her to you, um, Shade Richardson, who works as a manager in strategic partnerships and ex experiential learning in the Office of um, Public Health Practice. Um, so with that being said, Shade is also an alum of the school um, and she graduated not too long ago, so she can also share her current student experience as well as her experience as an alum too. Um, just to give you a little sense about the public health practice, um, I'll share that with you and then we'll pass it over to Shade. Um, public health practice at Michigan Public Health extends the university's resources to public health practitioners and government and community-based organizations, and it provides practice opportunities to our current students and faculty. Programs housed under the public health practice umbrella demonstrate the school's commitment to securing and strengthening Michigan public health's current and future public health practice through student engagement, workforce development, and community engagement. So with that, I'll turn it over to Shade. Um, the way today's session will work is she will provide you with some formal remarks about the office and how you can get involved as current students, and then we'll take some questions after that. So stay tuned, and if you do have questions while she's speaking, please feel free to throw them in the chat. Thank you. Thanks. Hi, everyone. I am Shade. My pronouns are she, her, hers. And as Mary Beth mentioned, I am an alum of the School of Public Health and also the School of Social Work. So for those interested in HBHE that, or Health Behavior and Health Education, that was my department. So who are we in practice? So practice comprised of myself, Shade, and Laura Power, who is our director of the Office of Public Health Practice. And she's also faculty in the Department of Epidemiology. So what exactly is public health practice? So it's the strategic, organized, and interdisciplinary application of knowledge, skills, and competencies necessary to perform essential public health services and other activities to improve the population's health. So public health practice is really about preparing you for the public health workforce and being mindful of those sort of 10 essential services of public health that are laid out and how you can apply what you're learning into the classroom to the field. At Michigan Public Health Practice, we build and nurture individual and community and organizational capacity for improved population health and greater health equity. And I'm gonna talk about how we do that. So we do this in a variety of ways. The big buckets that we can think of is student engagement, workforce development, and community engagement. And we provide technical assistance across all these different areas. And today I'm gonna to focus more a bit on what we do with students and the ways that you can tap in there. So you can think of practice as having all these different <laughs> buckets. So I'm gonna to talk today about the Public Health Action Support Team, the Public Health in Action courses, the Albert Schweitzer Fellowship, and the Public Health Perspective Series. So first, the Public Health Action Support Team, I was a member of FAST when I was a student, um, and it's really a transformative way to get involved with what's happening here locally in Michigan, Michigan but also provide opportunities to be deployed potentially to the U.S. Virgin Islands, Mississippi, Grenada, and other places as needed. Um, and the goal is to increase practical interdisciplinary learning opportunities for students. So you're gonna find different projects that our community partners have needs for, and I'm gonna talk a little bit about what those projects can entail later on and be able to apply what you're learning in the classroom to this. FAST is application-based, so the application comes out in the fall semester and you can apply. And once you get into FAST, you're a FAST member for life. There are some trainings to complete to be able to go on these different projects, but it's really a great opportunity if you're looking for hands-on experience while you're a student. 
So as FAST members, you'll practice exploring public health challenges through a variety of different lenses, serve alongside community practitioners and fellow students on meaningful work, and deploy regionally, nationally, and throughout the world to address emerging 21st century public health challenges. And that can be a variety of things. The big picture is about skill development. So you can learn quantitative data analysis as well as qualitative data analysis. You can work how to learn about empathy and engaging with community partners, right? You work on interdisciplinary teams so you can meet students across different departments in the school. We actually have students represented from every single department currently and I would like to see that continued in the future. And then it's about service. You're working directly with community partners and giving back. And it's about mutually beneficial service. So you're gaining things from this experience, but they're also gaining things from partnering with us. So that goes into our approach to the work. So we identify needs, we find that common interest, and our partnerships are time bound and it's about the right project at the right time. Sometimes we don't have the skill set or capacity needed to do that work, and we're able to have those open and candid conversations with our partners. A lot of the community partners we work with have been working with us for years. FAST has been in around since 2005. So there really is longevity there, as well as we've been cultivating new partners and relationships. So here are some examples of things students have done in the past. So with the Community Family Life Center in Ypsilanti, students developed an after-school educational curriculum for their after-school program. They also developed a volunteer management toolkit. And they're also volunteering with their community garden. For instance, with the Casper with the US Virgin Islands, students have been deployed to help the CDC administer this survey and collect data as well as input it into their systems. With the Healthy Dearborn Coalition, students were able to work on um, a health equity toolkit <laughs> that is being used by the coalition. And these are just a few of the ways that students can engage. There are one-off things like helping with flu clinics, through University of Michigan Health Service or even the Washington County Health Department um, or even like the Healthy Halloween event in Flint as well. So there are a variety of ways that students can get engaged in projects, whether it's short-term one-off deployments or longer-term projects like the Healthy Dearborn Project. The other component that's really unique is that we have courses and these are public health in action courses. So the idea is that these are two credit, seven week long courses. So students get deployed for a week um, to work on specific projects with community partners. So both Grenada and Texas happen simultaneously, typically over spring break. And then Mississippi typically happens after graduation. And the reason for that is we work with some partners at University of Mississippi and it works out better for their alignment to have that trip at that time. So these are past pictures from students on the ground working on different projects. These are the only opportunities that you have to get credit for the work that you do. Um, and you really, like the week is really intense. I was able to go on them as a student and you're actually working on these projects with the, the community partners. I know for my project, we worked with the Grenada Plant Parenthood Association and we were trying to bring about a national survey on sexual and reproductive health. So we're able to design and develop that survey um, and test it out as well. Here are some other places that FAST has done work over the years. So of course we are in Michigan, so we do a lot of things here locally within the state. We've got been to Louisiana, we do work in Mississippi, the Dominican Republic, Puerto Rico happened recently. The US Virgin Islands is an ongoing CDC partnership. Grenada, we have a variety of partners that we work with there for the classes, Texas and Kentucky. And in the past, um, they went to China, but it was quickly found that it wasn't the most feasible thing to travel that far over spring break or for a week. So we tend to focus our work in the US and in the Latin American Caribbean region. Another exciting opportunity that we have through our partnership is the Albert Schweitzer Fellowship. And this is a year long interdisciplinary fellowship where you get to pick a community partner and develop a project plan with them and implement that over the course of a year. There's also a stipend for this fellowship. It is run by Authority Health, but it's part of a national network of fellows. So once you become a Schweitzer Fellow, you become a fellow for life at the completion of the fellowship. 
and you're able to be a part of this large network. This fellowship, if you're thinking about it, information will start going out in October <laughs> of the fall because the fellowship runs from April to April of the following year. So you would ideally apply during your first year, but you wouldn't start it until um, your second year. And I would like to highlight that one of the requirements for MPH students is the applied practice experience. And these opportunities that we have within the office actually count towards this. So an APEX project, if you haven't heard of it, it's about promoting your professional development by exposing you to real world public health activities, which is exactly what practice is and what it's about. And it provides an opportunity to showcase the skills that you've learned in the classroom um, based on your own professional goals. So if you're looking for APEX opportunities, these <laughs> items that I've talked about count for that, but you're welcome to find your own as well. And there are lots of ways that you can do that. I highly recommend if it's something that you're thinking about to talk with the program coordinators in the different departments because each department handles this differently and you'd wanna have the best and most accurate information. The other piece of what we do is the Public Health Perspective Speaker Series. And these are informal opportunities to engage with public health practitioners. So you get a chance to ask them about a day in the life of their careers. What does it look like? What does it mean to be a public health practitioner? Um, you can ask how they got to where they are. And these are typically, most of the time they're alumni, sometimes they're other public health professionals that are really interesting, but I try to engage or bring people that are doing unique work <laughs> within the field of public health and across the different areas. So these are examples of people we've had in the past over the last year that I've come back to talk about their experience and their jobs in public health. So service to others is the rent you pay for your room here on earth. And that's what we truly believe and embody with public health practice. I know that was a lot of information, but I wanted to leave ample time to ask questions about anything that I've spoken about with you today. So I'm gonna check the chat and see if I see any, if not, feel free to add questions. Thanks so much, Shade. That was really informative. If anybody does have specific questions, like she said, please feel free to throw them in the chat. We're happy to take them. If you also have questions related to the current student experience or anything in general, please feel free to, to put it in the chat. We're, we're here and equipped, and if we don't know the answer, we can certainly find it for you. I see a question. What does the program in Texas do? Um, so the projects vary year to year, so it really depends on what the specific partners need. So the Texas project is in partnership with University of Texas Rio Grande Valley. It's focused on the border towns. Um, so it could be things from doing surveys, right, or translation if we have Spanish speakers. Those are some examples of some things that have been done in the past. So each year we work with our partners on the ground to find out what the needs are and that's what informs the projects for that year. Next question, are students funded for these projects, travel, room and board, et cetera? Great question. The majority of the expenses are covered. However, there is a small financial component for students um, that can vary depending on the project, but the bulk of your travel costs and room and board are covered. Food is typically the responsibility of the student or other on the ground expenses. My question is on postdoctoral fellowship in public health and how do, does someone apply for it? I'm gonna pass that to Mary Beth. <laughs> sure, so in terms of funding, um, the majority of our um, doctoral students are funded. However, postdoctoral fellowships would live within specific departments. So I can put in the chat information about our department program coordinators who can provide more insight in terms of what opportunities may be available. I'll do that in just a second. Um, Barb, I need a little bit more clarity on your question in terms of what kind of partnerships you're asking about.
while we are waiting um, for that reply, um, just a couple things that I want to note that I put in the chat box. The first being a link to our website that highlights our prospective student discovery series. Um, now the majority of those live sessions have been um, completed. So with that, we have some awesome recordings available to you all. So please feel free to check out the website to look at the recordings so that you can learn more about your department of interest. In addition to that, there also is some information related to some upcoming enrichment session opportunities, so please feel free to check that out. And then lastly, there is a link to our department and admissions contacts for additional questions. Any other questions? So Shadi, I have a couple questions for you while we're waiting for maybe some more to come in. Um, so with that being said, what was your favorite thing about being a current student at Michigan Public Health? Sure. Um, I think my favorite thing about being a student at the School of Public Health was having opportunities to work with students across the university, like it wasn't just specifically public health students, I could interact with students at the business school or at the School of Information. There are tons of different fellowships or competitions or grants, case studies and contests that you can participate in this year that allows you to build your network in different ways and hear perspectives beyond just the public health and the world that we're in. I see a question, what are the eligibility criteria for the Albert Schweitzer Fellowship and is it included or offered to the online master's student program? Good question. So the eligibility with the Schweitzer Fellowship, you do have to be in Michigan. There are some online master's students, but they are based in Michigan. So they're considering applying for this fellowship because you're working with an organization here. Um, and there is sort of a residential component where you're going to be doing um, these meetings with other fellows in the area or like leadership series sessions or things like that. So you would have to be in Michigan to do it. And in terms of eligibility, once you're a student and you wouldn't be graduating during the fellowship, you would be eligible to participate. It doesn't matter if you're a US citizen or not. Um, why did you choose U of M over other universities? So when I applied, I did, I applied to six schools um, and I got into the ones that I applied to, but the reason why I chose Michigan specifically was because of the public health action support team that didn't exist anywhere else. And I had also completed a summer fellowship called the Future Public Health Leaders Program at U of M um, as an undergrad. And it really made me feel more comfortable once I visited. Plus when I visited a school that I shall not name, um, one of the faculty members there said I could either choose to come to that school and have like a really fun life outside of school or I could go get a better education at Michigan. So I figured I would listen to that and go to Michigan. And I also got scholarship funding at Michigan and I didn't get that anywhere else. Um, are people who are part of the GEO program eligible for the fellowship? Yes, you are eligible. In some ways you're a little bit luckier in the sense of since you're in the dual program, you could potentially be here for three years. So you could do it in your third year as opposed to your second year, depending um, on your availability. So yeah, you are eligible. And I think the thing that's key with the Schweitzer Fellowship, it's about your own time management. Like you are deciding with that partner what you can do and you sort of map out your hours, how you plan to spend your time. So if you know, for instance, you have a really tough course load, you know, or you have exams coming up, like you can make adjustments as you go as well. It's really about you and the community partner and mutually beneficial relationships. Any other questions? Shada, you mentioned um, Future Public Health Leaders Program. Would you be able to expand a little bit about what that opportunity is? Sure. So the Future Public Health Leaders Program is a way to expose you to public health careers. If you're an undergraduate, that's an opportunity for you. Um, you apply and essentially it's a CDC funded program. So it's part of the CUPS, the CDC Undergraduate Public Health Scholars, I think it is, which is like four or five programs and FLIP is one of them. 
Um, but you come to Michigan <laughs> over a summer, you also get a stipend. They house you in campus housing. You go to classes, which are taught by Michigan faculty. You're assigned a mentor. I'm a mentor for the program. So I mentor a group of students where we have meetings to talk about public health, what that means, what you're thinking about for your career. And it also um, places you at a job. So you work with an agency um, for a couple of days a week. So it could be some people worked at the EPA, the Environmental Protection Agency. Some people worked at Michigan Medicine. Some people worked at other nonprofits in the area. I worked with an agency in Flint called the Your Center. So you could be placed in Detroit or you could be placed in Ann Arbor. You could be placed in Flint um, and you like carpool <laughs> to get to that. But it really is a way for you to understand and better grasp the breadth of what public health is and the different careers that you could potentially have. I think I saw someone raising their hand. Oh, does the university provide a list of suggested partners for the Albert Schweitzer Fellowship or for the Apex? Yes and no. In the sense of for Schweitzer, um, once I send out information about that, students meet with me. And based on the conversations we have, I may recommend some organizations that you can reach out to or from conversations with Dennis, who's over the Schweitzer Fellowship, he can recommend organizations that students have worked with in the past. But the idea is that it should really be self-driven. With Apex, if you're a part of FAST and you're working on those projects, then we have those partners that are already established that you're working with. Um, but Apex opportunities could come from your jobs. It could come from emails that go out from your departments, things you may be working on with professors. So there's a variety of ways that those can happen. I hope that answers your question. Any other questions? Um, this might be for Mary Beth, whether the short courses or certificate programs, example, three, six months or a year programs. Yeah, so we do offer some certificate programs, both for our online population that are enrolled in the MPH program, as well as our residential graduate program that is primarily um, our MPH and MHSA students. I'm happy to put links in the chat for those. Um, one thing that I will say is they typically don't cost more money or take more time um, in terms of your program duration. Um, in terms of them, though, with the um, three, six months or a year, um, I'm not familiar with that. It's typically coupled with your regular curriculum and, and academic plan. Um, one piece of advice um, for the residential one specifically is knowing that you're going to um, you know, achieve one of those or work towards one of those is, is helpful to know sooner rather than later in the course of your student um, experience. Because if you do know ahead of time, then you can plan out more accordingly. Um, in addition to that, we typically have students um, learn more about that in the fall term that they start. And I, like I said, we'll put more information in the chat about those. Any other questions? Is there anything, Shadi, that you want to share in terms of your favorite um, trip or project, or maybe a short story of of some a challenge that happened, or something unexpected, or something like that? I know you guys and you talked about so many fun things that you do. Maybe just. Um, some insights in that realm will be helpful. Sure. Um, what can I think of? So when I was a student, I went on the U.S. Virgin Islands trip with this, to assist with the CDC CASPER, which is a community assessment survey for public health emergency response. I believe that's what CASPER stands for. Um, so I did that project where we went out after the hurricane. This was... 2017, if I remember correctly. Um, and we went door to door, sort of serving individuals to ask about what their needs were, what was missing. And I think that was really impactful for me in terms of thinking, we see all the time on the news, like how hurricanes impact regions. And, you know, 
there's all this water and people are displaced but just hearing from people that was really heart-wrenching to hear like not living in like moldy situations not having access to electricity or water for this extended period of time um and it's really hard for me like not being able to have a solution in terms of what could be done because my job there was just to collect data for that so that was important to think about how we interact and move about in our public health spaces and how important it is to have empathy and be mindful of the worlds that we have with others. Um, and then the other thing that I can think of, Mississippi, we went to the Delta, we were in Clarksdale, and we did community profiles on health, um, American community census data, survey data, and census data. And Mississippi tends to rank 50th in a lot of health outcomes. So we had to find ways to think creatively about how to present the data truthfully, but also not to be like, you all are terrible and like this is going, you know, like you're not doing what you're supposed to do, but to bring about and spark conversations about how they could use this data to change the health outcomes and what information would be useful there. Um, Grenada, I actually went on after that trip to do my internship for public health. So that was an opportunity that I had. So for me, it was a little bit different in terms of like the spring break trip was sort of setting the foundation for what I would be doing for the three months when I went back in the summer. Um, and while I was there, I had to learn that things don't always go as planned when you're working in global health or working with agencies. Um, I was there to administer the survey. We spent about a month of my time there waiting and then we found out we didn't get the grant. So I had to pivot the project and it turned into more preparing tools that they could use for if they got future grant funding to implement it and helping the agency out with different projects that they needed on the ground since I was already there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think these are all really unique opportunities. So if you do choose Michigan Public Health and you're admitted, um, I would consider doing them at least one of them so you can have a sense of what public health is really like in the field. Um, are there any climate adaptation related project examples from FAST or maybe Schweitzer fellowships? Just wondering if there's a history of addressing climate policy related issues. Um, I would say not specifically that I can think of in terms of Schweitzer, in terms of FAST, we've done, so we do an emergency preparedness exercise with the Washington County Health Department. Um, and that's sort of a simulation of how to use the incidence command structure. So students take on those different roles to address topics. Um, so last year we did when football meets COVID-19 and a couple weeks ago we did climate change and misinformation. So having conversations about what that looks like within public health and addressing those challenges of what could happen. Um, however, I will say the projects for FAST that we typically have are driven by student interest. So the things that students have expressed their interest in is what I try <laughs> to find with our partners, but it's also based on partner need at that time. And I know climate change is something that stems a lot of different issues or areas. So it may not specifically say like, oh, this is, or explicitly say this is a climate change project, but there are implications within those projects. I hope that helps. Um, Mary Beth, there's a question. I'm a veterinarian from Bangladesh. I have completed my DVM, MS in vet microbiology. And now I'm doing an FET PV. Interested in getting a PhD in public health. Is it possible to make a sandwich program at U of M? Yeah. So if you do have specific questions about the PhD offerings, please feel free to shoot us an email. Typically, for uh, questions related to the PhD programs, it's best to connect with the department specifically. Um, so again, I can throw in the chat that contact information. Um, so you're welcome to, to reach out to them. Any other questions for Shade? Anything else you'd like to share, Shade? Um, oh, I do have my contact information here. So if there are specific things that you have about public health practice that you would like to ask, or something that you think about after this session, maybe you go to our website and you see things about FAST or you're curious to learn more, um, feel free to reach out and I'll do my best to answer those questions and share <laughs> the experiences that I have. But just, I think FAST is a really unique opportunity and something that we don't 
seen a lot of different places or it definitely wasn't something I saw at a lot of programs when I was considering public health schools. Um, and it's important whether you get involved in FAST, there are tons of student organizations at the School of Public Health. So I encourage you to do something outside of just your academics while you're in the program. Oh, um, could you please share your ideas about exchange programs, students and faculty? I don't know if we have exchange programs, Mary Beth, do we? Sure, so we do to some capacity, but it, it really truly depends on um, what your interests are. So if you do have um, more specific questions, we're happy to answer those offline. I will put in the chat here, our recruitment and admissions team email box. And again, please feel free to email us about your um, specific inquiries at any time. And here it is. And again, that's our recruitment and admissions team. If you have specific questions um, such as this one or questions about the admissions process, please feel free to let us know. Um, our team is happy to support you throughout your application process and we hope to see you next fall. Anything else that I'm missing, Shade, before we sign off? Nope, I think that's it. And I hope you all learned something about public health practice and what it looks like at the School of Public Health at Eat Michigan. Great. Well, thank you, everybody. We hope to talk to you soon. Don't hesitate to reach out if you have questions. Have a great day.